To be a Christian is more than your stance on abortion and same-sex marriage. Followers of Jesus Christ must understand that every person who walks this earth possesses the image of God. For this reason, racism, sexism, and homophobia are an assault on that very image of God. Now we have a president who makes this degradation of the image of God routine. And yet, this did not start with him. Trump is not the cause of all this. He is the consequence. Our country is embracing its very worst demons, showing how far and deep they really go. There is a better America, a better future, but this future involves choices, moral choices none of us can avoid. Christians who say they're not political will still make a choice when November 2020 rolls around. This can be a choice of silence, which works as affirmation of the status quo. It can be a direct vote for an anti-truth, anti-immigrant, white nationalist administration. Or it can be a vote against those systems and prejudices, a choice proclaiming that the image of God still has value. I am going to use a word that is controversial and may even sound irreverent, but it must be said, when your policies and your words are antithetical to everything that Jesus said and did, those policies are anti-Christ. The white nationalism in America is not just racism, it's anti-Christ. The dehumanization of immigrants is not just a lack of compassion, it is anti-Christ. The mistreatment of women through sexual harassment, abuse, and assault isn't just sexist, it's anti-Christ. And for churches not to name and say that clearly and boldly is evidence of their losing connection with Jesus Christ and his teachings. When you listen to some white evangelicals praise Trump, watch for how little they talk about Jesus and his plan of radical discipleship. We forget the complexity of his message. Jesus was a deeply radical figure. He proclaimed a vision of love and a new analysis of power that turned the world on its head. This brown-skinned Jewish rabbi had quite a lot to say about politics, or at least how we should apply our moral values to public life. Today, Jesus would have been the one celebrating the Black Lives Matter movement, shoulder to shoulder with his neighbors, especially those who are immigrants or refugees. Jesus would furiously defend our warming planet, regardless of whether that activism was popular. Jesus would stop at nothing to combat the inhumane treatment of families at the border. It's time to reintroduce this Jesus to our American churches. Too many churches, primarily white churches in our nation, excuse their silence by claiming they aren't political, that they don't have to weigh in on the extraordinary injustice we see all around us. Do you know what I have to say to that? Enough. I do believe in the separation of church and state, but not the separation of values from our public life. Get the f out of my country! It's all you Arabs and Democrats. But you Real go back where you came from. Jesus is remembered for asking very powerful questions like, who is my neighbor and what is truth? Often directly to politicians. The religious right has forgotten the heart of Jesus' message in its focus on two specific issues. Let me be clear, to be a Christian is more than your stance on abortion and same-sex marriage. Stay in the closet. Make no. sure your closet is in another closet. To be a Christian is to fiercely defend your neighbor, including especially those who couldn't be more different than yourself. To be a Christian is to stand against white nationalism and the anti-Christ policies coming from the White House. There is no dancing around that fact. To defend the image of God in all circumstances is every Christian's calling. LGBTQ are all initials 
that stand for people who are beloved by God. All human life, whether at the border or in the womb, has dignity. Furthermore, women who have abortions are beloved by God. We have to go deeper in our thinking about how we protect the vulnerable. There are 2,000 verses in the Bible about the poor. 2,000. Jesus tells us that the most important people are the ones he called the least of these, even while they are the least important ones in our politics today. Doesn't the church want to be remembered for its unconditional love for all people? How do we find our way forward together? Elections are very important, but winning an election isn't enough. It's time to not just go left or right, but go deeper. Allowing our faith and our values to determine our politics rather than the other way around is a great place to start.